Ah, autumn. The nights are drawing in, the leaves are turning brown, which means it's time for everyone's favourite autumn holiday, bonfire night. Because we Brits would supposedly rather celebrate the season with a 400-year-old propaganda ritual in which we burn an effigy of an infamous traitor and set off fireworks to, like, taunt his immortal soul or something. But apparently Halloween is also a thing, so let's do that instead. But seriously, I don't usually celebrate Halloween, or at least I haven't since I left university when it was just an excuse to get hideously drunk. But this is a costume channel, and people wear costumes at Halloween, and so here we are. Thankfully, I've had some guidance and inspiration on how to mark the season, thanks to the wonderful Kira Lee cosplay and the marvellous Lady Rebecca fashions. They have generously shared some of the vintage Weldon's fancy dress catalogues they have in their collections, and invited anyone who wants to to make a Halloween costume based on these books. And there are a bunch of us doing these, both on YouTube and on Instagram, so I'll make sure to leave all the info down below in the description if you'd like to see some more of these. But first, a disclaimer. Now, the thing with vintage costumes, and some modern costumes for that matter, Matter is that they are often hideously racist. And so if you go and Google this for yourself, please be aware there is a lot of offensive material in these books. That being said, there are also some really cute costume ideas in these books. I was a big fan of this artist's palette, for example, and this old-fashioned telephone. It was also interesting to see the kind of sassy political statement costumes like this England's Land of the Free one, or the ones based on adverts at the time, like this Ovaltine lady. But the costume that stole my heart, and I'm going to be making in this video, is this little guy. Now the original pattern came in ages 4 to 10 years, but I don't care. I just want to be a cute little owl for Halloween, because it's so cute and I can't even... <laughs> Anyway, my plan for this project is really just to experiment and have fun. It's a silly costume. This is a silly project. I'm just going to make this up as I go along and try and have a good time. So I've been thinking about how I want to construct this, and I think basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a onesie. I'm basing it off of this vintage clown pattern from around the same period that I found on Pinterest, and I think I'm just going to paint the feathers on. I'm not going for realism here. I don't want you to suspend your disbelief and really think I'm an owl. No, I want to look like an overgrown four-year-old who's refusing to wear anything other than the Halloween costume. I want to look like an idiot, because as far as I can tell that's kind of the appeal of Halloween, you get to send yourself up and have a laugh. So I've got my fabric, this double knit brown jersey, and I'm going to use some stash fabric for the ruff and the eyes. I've got a general idea of what I'm doing, so let's get cracking. In terms of cutting the pattern, I decided to take a, well, let's call it a Macara 2 as approach. That is, I laid out my fabric on the floor, drew around myself, and then hoped for the best. I used the vintage clown pattern as a guide for the shapes and referenced the 1930s knickers pattern I used in my previous video for the crotch curve. For the back, I used my front pattern piece as a guide, again using the knickers pattern for the crotch curve. I didn't work on the sleeves just yet because I wanted to make sure I was happy with the fit of the main body of the suit first, and so I tacked it all together with a large zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. I tried it on to see if I was getting the shape I wanted and made a few tweaks until I was happy. Mostly I altered the shoulders as they weren't sitting correctly and were much too wide. I also marked where I wanted the legs to finish and adjusted them to have the correct amount of volume. I stitched in those alterations and then tried it on again. The armhole was still quite low and the shoulder again wasn't right. I needed to angle down a bit more which would also help raise the armhole. so I stitched that third line in, and it worked. So I decided to move on to the sleeves, or should I say wings? For this, I used a two-piece sleeve pattern from a coat pattern I have as a guide. I wasn't entirely sure how to approach these sleeves, so I did a little bit of research before deciding to just wing it. I traced around the sleeve head and then just roughly cut around it with a wide seam allowance, intending to drape the sleeve on the stand. I procrastinated doing that by marking in and balancing up the neckline using my pattern master. 
I put the onesie on the stand so that I could check the neck placement and draw in the back neck. To do this, I had to snip into the seam allowance to get it to lie correctly. I made sure to pin the center front precisely together so that the top of the neck would line up when worn. I then turned the stand around and cut into the seam allowance at the back before drawing in where I wanted the neckline to go. Once I was happy, I chalked in all the other sewing lines, remembering to add lots of balance marks. This not only makes the construction a lot easier, but helped with painting later on as I could get my stripes to sort of match up over the seams. Then I unpicked everything so that I could get the pieces nice and flat. It was at this point that I couldn't take it anymore and returned to my usual precisionist approach, balancing the two halves of the pattern. It turns out no matter how much I try and be imprecise, I just can't bring myself to do it. Before I could start painting, I actually had to go and buy the paint. So I visited my local independent craft store because, you know, pandemic, and bought a selection of fabric paints and fabric medium. I used white fabric paint for its opacity and a two inch paintbrush to create the basis of the feathers. I used a makeup fan brush from the pound shop and inexpensive acrylic paints mixed with fabric medium for the colored details. I didn't dive straight in with the painting because even when I'm trying to be quick and carefree, I still have to make a sample. I looked at some photos of owls as research and then experimented on a fabric scrap with the different effects to see what I liked best. The original illustration had these scalloped lines running across it, so I tried that and various different techniques until I found my favourite. Then I started painting all the pattern pieces. I tried my best to make sure that the stripes would line up at least roughly over the seams. The balance marks I had added as a guide before I unpicked it really helped to get everything nice and even. This is just a quick overview of the painting process, if you're interested in replicating this effect. In reality, it took several days, and I really didn't enjoy it. I tried to have some variation in the painting so that the belly was whiter than the back, and the neck was browner and more densely feathered. I'm not sure you can tell on the finished garment, but the intention was there. Once dry, the instructions on the fabric paint had said to iron it under baking parchment. I am so glad I didn't skip this step as it really helped to make the fabric paint less crispy. It's still pretty crispy, but better than it was. I then bashed the whole costume through my overlocker, having precisely pinned all those balance marks together beforehand, of course. Next, I trimmed, notched and turned under the neckline ready to sew it in place. With hindsight, I should have just trimmed the neckline right down and left it raw. This fabric doesn't fray, and my sewing machine hated the conundrum of stretch fabric, but covered in paint. The stitching turned out terribly, so don't look too closely. I used long strips of Velcro to fasten the centre front, which again, my machine hated. I'm quickly skipping over this bit because there isn't much I can say other than I should have stitched the Velcro on by hand, but I didn't because I was still trying to make this project quick and fun. I also should have used several smaller strips of Velcro rather than one long big one. I know this, I do this all the time. Why didn't I do it here? In the interest of honesty, here is my god awful stitching. I turned the proper right side of the centre front opening to the wrong side and stitched it in place to create a sort of placket. I tried using the lightning bolt stitch on my sewing machine to see if that worked any better. It did vaguely, but still not brilliant. <laughs> With trepidation, I turned my attention to the cuffs, firstly evening them up and then turning them under by 10 centimeters and pinning in place. I wanted a little frill at the cuff to match that at the neck, which is why I made the turn up so wide. Then I tried to stitch it. It went, well, I cut some elastic to the correct length and used a safety pin to thread it through an opening in the cuff. I then stitched the ends of the elastic together before sewing it in place in the cuff to stop it twisting.
then a quick try on to see how it was all coming together. It was at this point I could procrastinate the sleeves no longer and wrestled with tacking in what I had cut earlier. Can you tell I had no idea what I was doing? I sketched out a bit more of a wing-like shape and then trimmed the fabric down. I still wasn't happy with where I was and so I asked for some help from some of my fellow costumers. Massive shout out to Queen Deluxe whose suggestion to move the sleeve placement further forward on the bodice made all the difference. You can see just how far I ended up moving it as I transferred my new lines to the other armhole with carbon paper. I cut another sleeve slash wing to match and transferred all the sleeve head markings, making sure I had a right and a left sleeve. At this point I was putting off painting the wings, so I made the hat. I did this by cutting two rectangles, approximately half the circumference of my head, with a little ear shape in the top corner. I then pinned the two layers together around the outside edge before stitching them together with a narrow seam allowance. As you can see, it was, well, um, not great, but I had a plan to fix it. Firstly, I made a band, slightly smaller than the circumference of my head, and eased the hat onto it. This made it sit much better on my head. I also reinforced the ears with an extra layer of fabric and stitched a little pleat into them to give them a bit more shape. Then it could no longer be avoided and I painted the wings. I tried to make the feathers seem longer on the wings. Did it work? Who knows? My next challenge was the feet. The illustration looked like a pair of boot covers, but I only had this cheap craft felt to work with. In the end, I just draped it over one of my shoes until I had something that vaguely resembled an owl's foot and cut around it for the second matching foot. I cut some black elastic to the correct length to get the feet to stay in place around the top of the boot and hand stitched it onto the felt. This was just because I didn't have enough yellow thread to actually thread up my machine, otherwise I would have zigzagged it on. I really love how these turned out and the way they moved. I thought they were so effective I indulged my past self with a little tap dance before the lactic acid burn set in. I then moved onto the ruff and the eyes for the hat. These I made from strips of cotton drill that I'd had in my stash since A level. For the neck ruff I did a narrow rolled hem on the raw edges of the strip and made a casing for a cord by folding one of the long edges under and zigzagging it in place. I threaded a length of cotton tape through with a safety pin. I gathered it up and tied it in place to check I was happy. I was thoroughly bored of painting by this point, so I didn't film the painting of the hat, but here it is once it had dried and been ironed. I had a real palaver with the eyes, and although I did film the making of them, it didn't make for very interesting viewing once I reviewed the footage. After many failed attempts, I actually used Bernadette Banner's ribbon cockades video as a guide, only using a folded strip of cotton drill rather than ribbon. I hand stitched the pleats in place as I'd previously failed miserably at getting this spiky snowflake under the sewing machine. I then pinned the eyes in place before hand tacking them on with a large crisscross of stitches.
Then to the middle of the eye, I added a large brown button, which I of course repeated for the other eye. And this is what that looked like. <laughs> I knew I wanted to add a yellow felt beak, so I cut a triangle of the same felt I used for the feet and played around for a bit. My first attempt was too big, so I cut it down and added a little tuck to give the beak some dimension. I then stitched the beak in place with the hat on so that I could be certain it was in the right place. I of course then took it off to sew it on more securely. I also tacked the eyes down in the middle to hold them in place, and the finished hat looked like this. <laughs> it was at this moment that I started to feel that maybe I was going to be a cute little owl for Halloween after all. The only thing that was left to do was sew in the sleeves, a task so spooky I completely forgot to film it. But then, the owl was complete. Honestly, I have really mixed feelings about this project. On one hand, it fits the brief. It's a silly owl costume that looks like something an overgrown four-year-old would wear, but it was by no means a quick, easy, or fun project in terms of the making. It was actually really tough physically, and I just didn't enjoy the kind of slapdash approach I took to the construction. But as you can probably tell by this little photo shoot I did in the woods, I do feel super cute when I wear it, so that's something. Next year, I think I'll return to my usual secular autumn traditions of Yorkshire parking and setting things alight. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween. I'll see you next time.